What's up YouTube? Welcome to my 2021 office tour. I post my desk setup on Instagram all the time and you guys ask me about it. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through my desk setup, my entire home office here and walk you through what I have, why I have it and how it helps me be more productive as a filmmaker. Here we go. And today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks. We love using their assets to really help our YouTube videos pop and stand out, whether that's with titles, audio tracks, images, After Effects templates, sound effects, whatever. Storyblocks is the complete stock solution with over 1 million royalty-free assets. With their affordable subscription plans, you can download and try any asset you want. And with their unlimited all-access plan, you can quickly try out multiple options and see what video or sound or title best fits your project. As filmmakers, we're always looking for high-quality solutions that will save us time when we need a sound or title or graphic created. And that's the need that Storyblocks saw in the industry and decided to fill. We'll put a link to Storyblocks in the description below or just go to storyblocks.com slash Parker. And thanks again, Storyblocks, for sponsoring today's video. Starting the tour with my workbench. We'll start here and then we'll kind of work away on the room and end with my desk setup, which is the most important part. So I wanted a workbench because I wanted to build all my camera rig stuff. I wanted to build everything in one specific place where I could easily access like tools and camera rig accessories and so forth without having to messy up up my desk. I want to keep that clean for my video editing and for my tutorials. And so I found this workbench at Costco actually for like 450 bucks. And the workbench actually also came with an industrial grade black pegboard, 72 inches long that I didn't want right here. So I took it off and mounted it and built a charging station with it, um, which we'll get to in a second here. But I want this to be open. So I have my calendar here, which uh, is the wrong month. One second. All right, November. So on the workbench, I have my Komodo rig. I usually have my Sony rig on here too. I like building camera cages right now. And I love building rigs. And so this is kind of half built right now. And I have all my tools in these drawers here. Got my multi-purpose tools. I have some small rig parts, some scissors. Another reason I love this workbench is because it fit three of my Pelican cases perfectly. I have Pelican cases for like everything. I have like a red Komodo Pelican case. I have my main camera Pelican case. I have my Sony Pelican case. And then under my stairs, I have more Pelican cases for like audio and my drone. And so I love that I was able to fit my Pelican cases under this workbench and still be able to build my things out and have it look aesthetically pleasing. I wanted my office to be productive. I want to be able to utilize every space of this room to enhance my productivity, but I also wanted it to look really cool and to be aesthetic and kind of all match. So I have my Nan lights, my mini Nan lights over here lighting up the workbench. And then over here, I just have a Lego Nintendo set, which I bought because it reminded me of my beginnings. My very first video I ever did on my YouTube channel 11, 12 years ago was a Lego stop motion video. And then here I am 10 years later in my own home office doing what I love for a living. It's a pretty cool piece. I love Lego. All right, moving on to my charging station now. Again, I took the pegboard from the industrial workbench and put it on this wall as a charging station. I got really lucky. You can't really find pegboards like this sold separately anywhere, but I will put links in my kit below to similar pegboards that you can use to build your own charging station. And if you'd like me to create a tutorial about how I built this charging station, just let me know in the comments below. So on the charging station, all I really have are the main batteries I need all the time. So so I have my 1DX batteries, my light batteries, my Sony batteries, my drone batteries, my RS2, my EOS R batteries for when I need them, and then some audio cables and some USB-C cables. Love this charging station. And then I just have this little mini fridge here. I love to keep this thing full of water so that as I'm editing, I can just kind of walk over here and grab some water bottles and keep editing, which kind of adds to my productivity, having drinks readily accessible, and it wasn't too expensive. I got on Amazon. And on top, I just have this cool glow from Ikea and then my Sonos surround system, which we'll get to last. Okay, so over here is kind of just like a lounging area for my friends come over. My wife wants to come down and hang out. An Fox side table here that houses like my files and documents and taxes and all that boring stuff in there. And then my iPad Pro here. I just bought it to recently help me with storyboarding and shot listing. I bought these blackout curtains, um, which can raise and lower, but I usually just leave them down all the time. And then I have this JWF neon sign above. Comment below what you think it means. Wrong answers only. On this side of the room, we have my entertainment center. This is the LG OLED True Black TV. TV, 55 inch that I love. I'd actually like to replace my current monitor with this TV. It has such great specs. I think I would love to try it out as a monitor. But for now, it's kind of a place where I can sit back, watch the YouTube videos we post, double check the color, watch some Netflix. So I want to relax, game a little bit, just kind of hang out over here. And under, I have my Sonos sound system, which I love Sonos. I've been very impressed with them. It's super cool. The surround system's in the office for when I'm watching these videos. Thing hits, super awesome. And on the side table here, 
where we just have a few things. A lot of these things were sent to me by awesome brands and awesome companies. And there's this really cool floating lamp here, for example, which isn't very bright, but just looks really cool. It's literally floating, which is so sick. I have my Nintendo Switch controller here. I don't really play a whole lot anymore, but me and the boys used to play all the time. And then Landon actually made this really cool camo wrap for my controller, which uh, I thought was really cool. This is a Home and Hadfield watch deck, which kind of just houses my movement watches, which I love. And it also has a little pullout drawer here where I can put more knickknacks. Just love the aesthetic of that thing. I just think a lot of these brands have nailed how to make accessories look sexy. And I just think it looks awesome. Next to that, I have my Sony noise canceling headphones, which I love on this Grove Mate headphone stand. And I have my Apple HomePod here and they don't make them this size anymore. And so this is kind of a, an antique, a relic, if you will, of my, uh, my studio. The thing thumps. I love that thing. And then my favorite accessory are these corner lamps here. These are like my favorite things ever. They're like a hundred something bucks. And I have like three of them in my office and then all throughout my house. They just look really cool. They light up the corner really well. You can kind of angle them out, light up the room or angle them at the corner and kind of light up the back room. And they're bi-colored. So you can go daylight, go warm, you can dim them. They're just like super cool. I love these things. If you want to pick those up, we'll put those in the link below. These are the FTF gear corner lamps, which uh, I think just became available. So here I have some shelves that just house my lenses and then some souvenirs from some trips I've been on. These were made by Grove Made as well. These things are insanely sturdy and they just match everything perfectly. I love these things. I have my very first ever camera from like 13 years ago that got me into videography in the first place is this Canon Rebel T2i and a $20 Nikkor lens. And the thing's probably worth $20 total now. This is what started it all. This is what me and my little brother used to make YouTube sketches on for fun during middle school and high school. And I always just like to keep it here because it's just a good reminder of why I got started in the first place. All right, moving on to the final piece of today's tour, my desk setup. This is my happy place. This is where I spend all my time right here in this chair. This is a Herman Miller in Logitech collaboration chair. This was very budget friendly. And by budget friendly, I mean not at all. This thing is stupid expensive, but I love it. And I got it because I had some back problems with my previous chair. It's very comfortable. It kind of molds to your spine and you can adjust everything custom. Okay, and so what I'll usually do is when I'm making my tutorials, and you guys have seen a lot of our talking parts, but I'll sit like this maybe lower the chair a little bit and I'll talk to my camera right here. And so what I wanted when I was creating this office space, I wanted to be able to have everything in its place minimally, meaning I didn't want a ton of C-stands and tripods and boom mics all over the place because it was just it just took up so much space. And so what I did is I mounted this wall shelf to the wall and so that way my camera in my small HD monitor just live there. And that way we can turn over, hit record and everything's set up ready to go. I have my lights and everything programmed to my Alexa device so that when I want to start recording, recording, I can just say some keywords and the studio lights will turn on and I can start recording. So for example, Alexa, turn off key light, turns off. Alexa, turn on key light, turns on. So if I want to kind of film everything at once, all the lights will turn on and turn off in the right spots. And above my camera here, I have two mounted Artifox magnetic boards, which just have some books, some journals, some headphones, and my studio mic. So that when I want to make a video, I just grab my mic, put it on my desk, plug it in, hit record, and it's good to go. So I get a lot of questions about my key light, and this is a Falconize SO68 TD key light. They come in different sizes, but this key light is like razor thin, which is why I bought it. Originally, I had my Aperture 120D with light dome in this corner and it was so big. It's like a three to four foot radius. It's just so wide and it required a C-stand. It was just so bulky and this space is pretty tight. And so I didn't want you know a C-stand with a huge light. So I found this falconized light that takes up like no room compared to the light dome. And I was like, I still don't want it on a stand in the corner because there wasn't room for that. And so then I looked on Amazon and I found these mounts that you can mount to the ceiling for lights. Just drilled it into some studs at the top. I put an outlet in the back corner to plug it into. So it's just pretty cable free. It's plugged in, it's out of the way nothing's under it. If I want to take it off and take it to set, I can, which is awesome. I love this thing. The light comes the remote, so I never have to touch the settings in the back. It can be bi-colored, can go super warm or super cool. And it's also dimmable, so you can choose your own brightness, which is just awesome. Behind my desk here, I have felt right acoustic panels all throughout this entire nook here. Essentially, it's this awesome company I found where you can create custom colors and shapes of sound panels and then stick them to your walls however you want. I bought like a thousand of these black 
brick type acoustic panels and they're all just individual pieces that I stuck to my wall. For this whole entire nook, I think it cost me like 500 bucks. I still want to put some acoustic panels and some sound traps on my ceiling and in other parts of the room. We'll get there hopefully in the next few weeks. And then in this corner over here, I have a Lift X light beam. It's actually like seven pieces that you can kind of put into different shapes that I chose just kind of be one long boring shape in the corner. And I love it a lot because you can adjust the brightness and the colors and it can actually be a variant and move with different shapes and colors at the same time. Like if I wanna, you know, create some gaming atmosphere, but I usually just kind of leave it on a white setting. And moving on to the final part of today's tour, my desk setup. So first things first, this is a 72 inch walnut industrial uplift sit stand desk. I love the desk, I love the company and it allows me to sit or stand as I'm editing, which is really nice and have the perfect length for my little setup here. On top of my desk, I have a ton of Grove made products. Everything you see is probably made from Grove made. They're like my favorite desk accessory company out there. And this video is not even sponsored by them. I just love them so much. First up, we have this MagSafe charger where I put my phone there as I'm editing. It's the Walnut Stand by Grove made, which I just love. So that way my phone can be upright facing me as I'm working. I just see my notifications as they come in. And then Grove made also makes these monitor stands, which really just kind of provide an extra lift to your monitor. My monitor is mounted through a Visa arm, but if I did have like a desktop computer, this is the perfect stand just kind of mounted on top. But I still like it because it kind of separates my monitor from my desk and also gives me a cool tray where I can put pens, chargers, whatever it may be. Under the monitor stand, I have some very important things like my audio interface here for when I'm doing tutorials. That's the Rode A1 audio interface so I can plug in my microphone and just record right into my computer. And then I have my Duet audio interface for my speakers, which we'll get to in a second. Um, so that just controls the volume of my sound output, whether it's my speakers or my headphones. And then I just have my keyboard here with a Grove made keyboard tray, which is just looks super cool. And then a keyboard wrist rest, I say that five times fast, wrist rest um, from Grove Me as well, which just kind of helps elevate your wrists a little bit better. I used to get like really bad wrist cramps by doing this all day. And so I just noticed that when my wrists were slightly more upright, um, it helped out a lot. And then under all of that is the Grove Made matte black desk mat. I think Grove Made took that concept of like a mouse pad and they just said, well, let's just make it the entire desk. And so this whole desk mat works as like a mouse pad for my Logitech MX Master 2S here, but also just kind of protects the desk from wear and tear. It's a lot easier to replace a desk mat than it is a walnut to desk. It looks really cool, it matches my vibe. And I have like other little things like Grove Made pens, pen stands, sticky pads, everything. Just an awesome company. Definitely check them out, definitely give them a follow if you haven't already. On top of my monitor here, I have a BenQ monitor light. Here's it with it off, you know, it just kind of adds like an extra light element to your desk. I just kind of like how it feels and how it looks, um, especially lights up my keyboard really well. I take a lot of desk pictures and so I want my desk to be well lit at all times. And uh, this monitor light just kind of creates a better mood for those pictures and for that atmosphere. It's bicolor, it's dimmable. And then my monitor is the LG ultra wide 49 inch monitor. This thing's a beast. It's a dual display and it's LG. So it has great color options. My favorite part is treating it as a dual display so I can split the screen. Like if I wanted to, I could plug in my MacBook or if I want to put like my PS5 on one screen and my work on the other screen, I can. Love the LG monitor, definitely recommend it. It's unique and it looks really cool. And then over here on this side, I just have my PS5, which uh, earlier this year I had COVID. And so I bought a PS5 during quarantine. I freaking love it. These next gen consoles are awesome. I don't play on it a whole lot anymore, but when I do play, it's just fun time to kind of after work, decompress, kind of let off some steam and just kind of relax and just do some casual gaming with the boys after a long work day. As for my studio speakers is these Frontier by Outputs. Um, these things are insane. I love them. They sound incredible and they look really cool. They have the walnut accent, which I kind of wanted. Once I started taking filmmaking more seriously, sound designing became a crucial role in that. And then on top of that, hearing what I was doing became crucial and hearing the imperfections in the audio became crucial in my work process. They have not disappointed me yet. So highly recommend Frontier by Output or anything by Output is awesome. But this is a card reading tower. It's called a Black Jet Tower. It's pretty pricey, but let me tell you why. It's an industrial customizable card reading station. I have here SSD, CFast 2.0, CF Express Type A, SD, and Micro SD. It's just super fast. This thing is lightning fast. For me, it's one of those purchases that I do not regret. I hated having to search for card readers because I would always lose them or misplace them or give them to friends. And so just having one that's always on my desk stationary, super love it. And then I have my headphones here that I use for editing and all my sound mixing and stuff and sound design. These are the Bear Dynamic DT 990s, which I love. There's better options out there for sure, but at the end of the day, these work great for the purposes I need them for. And as 
that's for my machine, my main computer, it is the Mac Pro, which I love. I had first the iMac, then the iMac Pro, and now the Mac Pro, and I love it. I wanted the Mac Mini for a little bit because of the M1 chip, but I wanted a lot of USB-C ports. I need them for all my things plugged in, and the Mac Pro met those needs. And so I invested in a pretty hefty editing machine here, and it has not disappointed me. It's super fast, everything can plug into it, and it's just a beast of a machine. Put some LEDs under it just to make it look cool. And then under my desk, I have my hard drives mounted to the bottom of my desk. I buy GTEC drives. I love GTEC. They've never failed me. They've never corrupted on me. They've been very reliable. So I've always bought GTEC. First, it was the two terabyte and the four terabyte and the 10 terabyte. This is the 60 terabyte hard drive. And then behind it on the floor, I have last year's 40 terabyte hard drive. Love their company and love their products. And that is it, you guys, for today's office tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, this is an accumulation of over five years of doing this full time. My very first desk ever was a $100 desk from Ikea. And then Parker had to lend me his iMac because my Mac Air from college wasn't powerful enough to edit his videos and he needed me to do my job. So he lent me his iMac so I could actually edit on it. And it barely fit on this tiny little Ikea desk that we had pushed behind our couch in our apartment. And then over time, as I grew my business and grew my skills and I made more money, I was able to invest in more gear until eventually now I'm very blessed to have a space that I was able to create to fuel my creativity, to help me do my job even better everything in here helps me in some way be more organized, be more productive, be more efficient, and be more relaxed. And I think all those things are crucial. But again, you guys, we'll put links to everything in here below. I'll put it all on my kit. You can check out every single thing I've ever owned in this office. And you guys, one of the reasons I'm able to create a space like this and do what I love for work is because of Full-Time Filmmaker. And a lot of you guys may not know this, but before I started working for Full-Time Filmmaker on this channel, I was just a guy with a camera. And I found Full-Time Filmmaker, the online course, and I took that course to help grow my skills. And that led to so many amazing opportunities traveling the world, filming with Parker, filming with other creatives and building out my skills as a filmmaker until I was able to create a space like this and have my own studio. But you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Again, if you haven't already, check out Full-Time Filmmaker, the ultimate online film school where you can learn everything there is to know about whatever industry you want to get started in. Whether that's weddings or real estate or commercial or travel, whatever it may be, we've put together this course to help you grow as a filmmaker. But that's it for today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any further questions for us, please let us know.